Security situation in the North East will not be the same in 2021, Governor Babagana Zulum declares. The President has assured Nigerians, has assured people of the North State that we shall see improvement in the year 2021. Farmers in Kano and Digawa states to benefit from 12.2 billion Naira irrigation projects. Nigeria's stock exchange outperforms all exchanges in the world with a record breaking equities index rising above 45% in 2020. And on Good Morning Nigeria, today we shall discuss Nigeria's economy in 2020. All right, economists will tell you that the fate of any nation hinge on, of course, its economy. Perhaps this line of thought prompted an economist to posit that economic powers would always influence government's policies, or even to some extent dictate government's policies. Quite true there, Claire. And you know, most certainly the year 2020 has been a mixed bag of, you know, portfolio of the highs, the lows, and of course, one devoid of uncertainty and instability with the coronavirus pandemic having a significant impact on the economy with job losses and a negative growth rate at all levels of government. Indeed, there were so many factors that affected the economy in 2020. And quoting the National Bureau of Statistics, um, the Nigeria's economy grew by 1.8% in the first three months of 2020, but shrunk from the previous quarter. And that's because of all global, um, the deepening of global oil prices, as well as international dynamics of international uh, trade. So we also have the almighty COVID-19 coronavirus <laughs> pandemic and also the aftermath of a lockdown that spanned for more than four months as part of measures to contain coronavirus and the stark reality of an economic crunch. Mm. The federal government introduced interventions as response to emergency economic challenges arising from COVID-19. Indeed and the interventions of course were contained in a document uh, that we know as the Nigeria Economic Sustainability Plan NESP I'm sure by now it has become like a national anthem exactly. you know, in the ears of many Nigerians. Now, exactly. it is a working compendium of sustainable monetary and fiscal measures put together by select committee or select members you know in a committee comprising of ministers um, public uh, private you know individuals economic experts and of course it is stirred by the vice president himself yes and this development was indeed welcoming but while nigerians were still savouring the impact she was hit again by a second wave of recession of five years, as formally announced by the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, and predicted by the Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Planning earlier in the year. But resilience would actually describe the position of the Nigerian government when at its Federal Executive Council meeting on December 16, to be precise, it approved the immediate reopening of four major land borders in Nigeria. And while still in the euphoria of the moment, the two chambers of the National Assembly passed the 2021 appropriation bill of 13.5 trillion naira, which is 505 billion naira higher than the figure submitted by the executive for the first time, actually. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> now, there were other high points in, in, the, in the year, of course, uh, 2020, that's the year under review. And this will include the driving growth, um, you know, through key non-all sectors such as agriculture 
agriculture. There was also the launch of an integrated gas handling facility in Edo State. And of course, the IMF ranking uh, of Nigeria as number one or first in Africa in terms of GDP growth. And 26th in the world, of course, this just came in uh, just um, you know, a few hours ago. Uh, it's in 2021, in just about 24 hours, 24 hours? 24 hours. <laughs> 24 hours. Yes. So it will be in, in, in less than, not 24 hours, it's yes. less than 24 hours actually. Uh, this is uh, the 31st of de December. And the last edition. And the last edition of Good Morning Nigeria. Nigeria. So how can we sustain and improve on the financial indices, positive financial indices and trajectory, uh, you know, in the previous uh, or outgoing year? What are the strengths and weaknesses of government's fiscal and monetary policies that shaped the economy? and what will be the outlook for 2021. These and more are some of our talking points today as we again continue our review of Nigeria's uh, economy in 2020 and of course highlights on Good Morning Nigeria. I am Claire Adelabu Abdul Razak. Welcome and them um, Yes, it's all girl power today, you know, from the producer <laughs> <Girl> to, <power. laughs> you know, from the producer, Jumai, from to the, the newscaster, to the newscaster, to Jumai, yes. The yes, we do have our complimentary segments, which includes newspaper review. But first, let's join Lydia for the morning news. Hello, Lydia. Yes. Compliments of we, the we season. We saw her the queen of Igedi. Yes, Igedi, <laughs> and she's looking elegant this morning. Thank you, Jumai. <laughs> and Claire. Good morning Nigerians and welcome to the morning news. The security situation in the northeast and indeed other parts of the country will not be the same in the year 2021. Governor Babagana Umarazulum of Borno dropped the cheering news while speaking to newsmen after an audience with President Muhammad Buhari. The discussions focused on the prevailing challenges of security as well as the planned repatriation of Nigerians taking refuge in neighboring countries. The President has assured Nigerians, has assured people of the North State that we shall see improvement in the year 2021 and I'm optimistic that we shall see it. Government at the subnational level will also exploit all potentials to strengthen the resilience of the communities in addition to what the Nigerian army is doing. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari is tasking the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure to collaborate more effectively with critical stakeholders towards ensuring that its technological inventions are not only mass-produced, but deployed and utilized for enhanced national growth and development. This was when he granted audience to the Executive Vice Chairman of the agency, Professor Mohamed Sani Haruna. The president is very impressed and happy with the achievements so far. He urges us to do more, such that the technologies that are yet to be deployed for the benefits of Nigeria can be done, and also promise to look at all our hindrances for optimal performance. The Nigerian Stock Exchange has outperformed all exchanges in the world with a record-breaking equities index rising above 45% in 2020 and an increased market capitalization to the 15 trillion mark. The bullish performance in trading activities in recent times aided an outstanding performance on Tuesday where the all-share index on the Nigerian stocks appreciated by 4.9% percent thereby placing it far above 93 equities indexes. We will discover that foreign investors were pulling out in droves. But what we currently with the dominance of retail uh, as well as um, institutional domestic investors, uh, the dynamics has changed and most investors are holding on to their position ahead of declaration of dividend in the first quarter of 2021. And to agriculture, and a large number of farmers in Kano and Jigawa states are set to bid farewell to poverty with the reactivation and completion of the hitherto abandoned Giri irrigation project. About 12.2 billion naira has been expended on the project, and already part of the work has been completed and returned to farmers. <laughs> After two months, we will harvest and sell the onions. 
him then we plant rice. The moment the construction is completed, production is started, a market will come and people will come to buy the products that was produced by the farmers. Following the expiration of the first phase of the 2020 end of year special patrol operations, the Corps Marshal Federal Road Safety Corps Boboi Oyeyemi has issued fresh orders to the Corps personnel on the urgent need to buckle up and shun compromise to realize the set goals. In the statement, the Corps Marshal expressed satisfaction with the performance of the personnel and conduct of the motoring public in the first phase of the operations. He charged the personnel to remain focused as he urged motorists to show cooperation and greater commitment to issues of road safety for maximum impact as the second phase of the exercise commences in earnest following a successful Christmas celebration. Oyeyemi particularly urged the commanding officers to internalize the gains of the first phase of the operations and ensure that the entire workforce maintain high spirits with every bit of professionalism they have been imbibed with. And to COVID-19, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has confirmed 1,016 new cases of COVID-19, increasing the number of confirmed cases to 86,576 in the country. Of the 1,016 new infections recorded in 20 states and the FCT, Lagos has 434, the FCT has 155, Plateau 94, Kaduna and Rivers have 56 new cases each, Oyo 30, Nasarawa 27, Zamfara 25, Abia 22, Enugu and Kano have 18 each, Bayelsa 15, Edo 14, Ogun 11, Borono and Ebony 10 each, Jigawa 7, Anambra 4, Wa Delta, Niger and Oshun confirm three new cases each. Total number of cases of recorded cases per state also increased nationwide and Lagos now has 26,618 cases. Next is the FCT with 11,588 cases followed by Kaduna with 5,127 cases. Plateau with 4,849 total confirmed cases. Some 11,976 cases are active now across the country, while 73,322 patients have been discharged after recovery with 1,278 deaths, unfortunately. And that concludes the news highlights for now. Claire and Jumai will be back to continue Good Morning Nigeria after this break. See you next year. A scorecard like no other. put in place measures and initiatives principally targeted at youths, women, and the most vulnerable groups in our society. These included broad plan to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years, the creation of 75 billion Naira National Youth Investment Fund to provide opportunities for the youths and the micro, small and medium enterprises survival fund, through which government is a pay three month salaries of the staff of 100,000 micro, small and medium enterprises, b pay for the registration of 250,000 businesses at the Corporate Affairs Commission, c giving a grant of 30,000 Naira to 100,000 artisans and guaranteeing market for the product of traders. These are in addition to many other initiatives such as farmer money, trader money, market money, and power, and tech, and and agro. These and more in spite of a recession and a global pandemic.
Although social media as a channel of communication is inherently harmless, it becomes harmful and damaging when used without discretion and thoughtfulness. Bad social media users spread rumors and fake news without verification. But good social media users stop, reflect, and verify information before sharing it. Be a good social media user. Stop the spread of fake news. Verify the authenticity of your source and use social media responsibly for a better Nigeria. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency. The Council of Our Fathers. My advice to these young people is please uh, do not take us back to those harrowing days. You probably do not know what it is. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. Life can be very eventful. We curiously expect things to happen even when we don't know what. Our human nature makes us like and repost lots of information. Some are unverified, inciting anger and hate. Sometimes innocently, other times the urge to break it first. This, in most cases, has caused destruction in many nations. Kende suffers from indigestion. His twin Taiyi suffers from heartburn. Sometimes it's the other way around, or both. That's why they use Gaviscon Double Action. It soothes within three minutes and lasts for up to four hours. For double relief from heartburn and indigestion, Gaviscon Double Action. You're welcome back to Good Morning Nigeria. Now, development experts advocate research based agriculture in 2021. Let's join Kune Day for details. With agriculture expected to play one of the leading roles in stabilizing the economy in 2021 owing to its vast nature, a development economist, Dr. Emeka Okengu, has urged the managers of the sector to be in tune with the current global trends. He craved for a public private partnership approach. He said there has to be a lot of realignment. Okay, first, research is very important, very, very key. All right, uh, research must be able to uh, meet development. Uh, and then development must be able to meet financing or even something better, something more engaging. Maybe you can even corporatize. Do you understand? So there is, you can run this on what they call the shared prosperity model. In another development, a consultant to ECOWAS on common and investment markets, Professor Jonathan Aremu has urged countries in the sub-region to adopt the ECOWAS payment and settlement system for easy transaction. We are importing something from Ghana, okay? So instead of paying through letter of credit in US dollar, right? You know, if the thing costs about two dollar, all what you need to do is to pay the equivalent of two dollar into your bank account. Now, Central Bank will send the money to Ghana Central Bank, right? And then Ghana Central Bank will pay those people. He said the African Continental Free Trade Agreement will strengthen international trade in the sub-region and the continents. With business news, I'm Kunle Adeyei. All right, Kunle, thank you. And this is coming up next as the newspaper review and go away. Our 
newspaper reviewer, Bio Toyobi, is in the studio. Good morning, Bio. Good morning, Jumei. Good morning, Claire. We have 16 hours to the new year. Yes, welcome Precisely. to the last, yes, Thank you. last edition well, of Good Morning yes. Nigeria. Don't no worry, that's, that's why I didn't get a, an A in maths. <laughs> and I, I, don't, I don't think, Jume, I don't think you did. Ah, because, eh? That's not my play area. I, don't, I really don't, never liked maths. Why, maybe why, because why, of, why because, we were shy away from No, 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 maybe because the kind of teachers we had then, you know, most of our teachers then were Indians. So, you know, they did, you know, for you, you to really understand how, the how you know, yen plus three yen equals to five years, you know, it was so difficult. Yes, you, know, Jumei, you are not paying attention in class, so you cannot understand Exactly, so what are you doing now? <laughs> yes, but, but, but that, but that's, that, that's, that's that not was no excuse, excuse, actually. That's no excuse. But, eh? That's no excuse. I, I, I actually I, did, did not do too badly. No, and no, that's no, because no. I had to recommit myself, really. Yes, and, everything yes. is determination. Yeah, precisely. I have been geared towards the arts from precisely. the beginning, even though I was a science student, but... Anyway, that's Mass. not the yeah, that's issue there. Let's start with the nation newspaper. Yes, Just clear is away all my time. Exactly. Huh? She's not sitting close to you today. And um, we're starting with the nation newspaper, actually. And Kanu is a threat to Igbo president above the masthead, says coalition. You find details on page four. Politicians hijack appeal court judges' appointment. You find details on page five. How Adekunle battled COVID-19 by Ogun... Agunloe and uh, uh, Kogi Nasarabauchi sign next year's budget. You find details on page six and eight. And uh, just be before, uh, below the mass head, NCC leaves embargo on SIM replacements. That details on page 27. Two to die by hanging in Jigawa. You find that on page six. And the bold headlines there says federal government mounts pressure on states for COVID-19 action with riders, reopen all laboratories, isolation centers. Nigeria Medical Association cautions against school reopening. And the picture story you see there, a U.S. military guard of honor carries the casket of the late ambassador, Silvanus Unsofo, immediate past ambassador of Nigeria to the years in preparation for his departure from the Jews International Airport, Washington, D.C. yesterday. And um, actually the body of the ex-Nigerian U.S. envoy has arrived in Nigeria. Crossover service, row deepens. You find details on page four. At the bottom plate of the nation newspaper, troops rescued 23 in Katsuna. Details on page four, Lalong, Mons, Yoruba community leader. You find all that on page 31. All right. On uh, the front page of the punch bio, nothing much to cheer about. Mm -hmm. It's all about crime. It's all about risks from rising from COVID-19. Uh, it's all about insecurity, abductions. Very little to cheer. Uh, but I'll just take the cheering news first, which comes just atop the mass head. Uh, and it's on, on the economy. It says, external reserves rise end December at $35.35 billion. So that's something to cheer about. That's something to cheer about. And I think we should start uh, uh, with that um, uh, bio. Uh, and also the cherry news, of news? course. Yes, on the cherry news, I, I think I should begin to you know, exit 2020 and exit all the negativity, the all the negative mm. vibes. So, yeah, we, crossover with positivity. Cross, yes, exactly. you know, we heard the news that, of course, our exchange did, you know, very well. Was well, came out as one of the best in the world. You know, that was one of the news we read this morning. Okay. And this is also telling us that our external reserve is rising, mm -hmm. you know, at $35.35 billion. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Uh, Nigeria external reserve has risen to, it rose with 300 and. $80 million by 21st of December. The nation will be closing the year 2020 with a reserve of $35.36 billion. COVID-19 has weighed down the global demand supply and also the prices of crude oil, and this affected Nigeria ex ex exceptionally. Public external reserves remain $31.38 billion. Uh, and at the end, that is at the end of June, and this is about 8.1 percent of the gross domestic product. The sustainable threshold is 40 percent of GDP. So mm. uh, apparently, we are yes. in, in in very safe uh, pa parameters. Mm. But the reserve is about 35.36 billion and can fund 
uh, goods for about 8.4 months. On the side of the IMF, mm. the International Monetary Fund has also provided a, a rating. I says our gross domestic product of nations ranked Nigeria as 26th in the world. The, world uh, the nominal GDP estimate is calculated from financial and statistical institutions at market and government rates for the exchange rate. Nigeria is ranked first in Africa. Nigeria is reported to have put in place measures to improve the economy by tackling various sectors that have direct impact on the lives of the citizens. You know, so, you know we we're, were discussing this morning with our producer, and, and we did say, Jume, you, you would agree with me, that yes, uh, these are so at the macroeconomic level. Uh, but when you go down, the the reality, you know, people don't seem to understand what 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 we're talking about Not at all. Because you talk about stock performing, you know, outperforming the others in the world. What does it mean for the people? Yes. What does it mean for for shareholders, for instance? In fact, the president also said it one other time. He said, "Well, these statistics are very beautiful, <laughs> but what does it? What is the impact on the ordinary man? man? And that is the matter of the concern. And usually, he says, let's see the thing, the impact on the ground." Reflect. Mm -hmm. Let it reflect on the ordinary. On the, ground, yeah. the other area of concern which uh, you may read about is crossover row. Mm. Uh, they, they have mixed reactions about crossover. In Kogi State, uh, churches in Kogi State have been told that they can observe crossover. That is a service from 31st December into the new year. The chairman of uh, Khan in Kogi State, John Ibenu, says that he has spoken with government officials and says, let us keep the nation and Kogi State in prayer and have the trust that no plague will come near Kogi. You know, Kogi is said to have recorded the least yes, in COVID-19 yes. In the initial stages, people were saying it is a ruse. Mm -hmm. But up till now, we were hoping that if it was, it was a ruse, Kogi will be overwhelmed with the number of deaths. But apparently, from all the statistics available, if you go to the NCDC chart, Kogi has a record of five deaths since COVID-19 started. Mm. And so there's something that Kogi is doing that is working for it that probably we can learn from. You know, it, it, has, it has become a very contentious issue, the, the Kogi case, yes. uh, really. And um, I don't think the handlers or the, you know, committee, that's the task force committee, would want to join issues because the governor has come out, you know, severally publicly to say, look, I, I, I have my, I have my reservations mm -hmm. about this, what the is numbers, going on, yes, yes the with, the, with the COVID-19 mm -hmm. issues, you know, so there really is something that must be unveiled. Mm. Whether for good or for bad, they're going on. But it's not just it's, just, it's not just Kogi really. There are other states too. Yes. you know that have very low mm. uh, testing. You know stat statistics. Like but, in Bono, you know, when it started, I kept mm. telling people that around that period, March, April, May, in Medukuri, we see a lot of deaths because of the heat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that was when the numbers were coming out yeah. from Medukuri at that time. It was the weather actually, and. Um, the numbers came down drastically and just a few days it just started spiking up with maybe five, mm. six, seven new cases. But I think on a lighter note, we're going to give people a resilient people. You know, we're cracking that joke. Uh, no. In fact, the Commissioner of Health was on Good Morning Nigeria yeah. and he actually gave an explanation about the measures Kogi said had taken. Yes. Learning from the experiences in handling several other ailments like uh, Ebola, mm -hmm. Lassa fever. Mm -hmm. And so before even the lockdown, Kogi had gone ahead, according to him to put several measures in place yes. and they are still following up through you know we do we do hope that the the governor of kogi will really uh, oblige our invitation because we have severally reached out to him mm -hmm. you know, to yes. come on good morning nigeria yes it's uh, we've not been successful i do hope he's watching or some of his aides we would really like to hear have him on this show yes. and have him talk to us uh, because the here magic we look yeah. at the issues about the magic, the magic one, yes, the magic one that you know is going on and just to you know Touch a little bit on the crossover. Yes, yeah, you know, a lot of people are talking about crossover, crossover. And one motivational uh, speaker, I'm sure you must have read it. it it's on on the social media. Okay. Says, look, if at 2 p.m. today you wish someone happy new year you will be right because yes. in other parts of the world it's already new year it's already new year yes. so just cross over you yeah. don't have to oh. gather, gather and, australians yeah. are probably celebrating the new already? year about now new yes. zealand and we are waiting for another 15 hours 15 to celebrate hours. the new year yes. that is what the world is but talking about the crossover the president of christian association of nigeria dr samson yokule has called on churches to follow covid 19 protocols strictly mm -hmm. uh, in his advice he says that where crossover have been embargoed, churches might meet earlier 
to give God praise and give uh, for life giving and also during the pandemic and also please request for 2021. And what he's ad advocating for is that there should be cooperation with government over the crossover. You know, you know, you know, Bayo Ijume, you know what happens at crossover nights. Yes, we do. Sometimes you lose yourself. I mean, you know, you let go. Mm. And and as as they will say in prayers and, and yes. in, you know, to come and in the with celebrations. Your God, and the celebrations. So it will really be difficult to apply Control. the protocols, yes. you know, except the, the churches come out with innovative ways of you know maybe okay I, I don't know cutting down the numbers mm -hmm. but let's quickly look at the nobody will agree yes, to stay out you know let yeah. me just read out another important so we've talked about the uh, COVID-19 testing and, and the low low uh, mm -hmm. testing mm -hmm. and states that have, or are involved in that but there's a picture story Jume and mm -hmm. Bio on the front page of the punch yes it's in fact these pictures exactly what is going on different uh, name centers across the country uh. and this situation is applicants at the national management commission office of the i mean national identity management uh, in commission uh, office uh, in alausa in lagos these are the no people who have gone there to get their name uh, numbers you can see the way they are crowd in fact uh, i i can hardly see maybe just a uh, one two pick out one two people you know mask. We, we, exactly mm. and no social distancing no social distancing already the national identity manager council have found a solution to it to avoid this crowd okay. they have now put in place a system whereby you go and register your name and then they will now develop a protocol of a list and give you this for which you people can come so that you don't have a kind of a rush on the name center also the date of two weeks before had already been extended to January 16th and the National Assembly, the House of Representatives, actually passed a resolution calling for it to be extended up to February 18th. Because the challenge is, if it took NIMSI 10 years to register 40 million Nigerians, mm. how were they expected to register 161 million in two weeks? <laughs> you, you, you know, they, 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 they did actually explain it. Yes. Using their ecosystem you know, mm. uh, approach. And they have already you know, escalated the centers mm. and involved private sector. So it's not just name in officials that will be doing the registration. There are agents, there are yeah. agents you know, and even anywhere government in the institutions, world, state anywhere governments. Anywhere in the world, yes. you know, the new normal is just use technology to do all these things. They just give out something you can sit down in your home and do it. Too many technology fails sometimes. Yes, but in, 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 this is a new normal. You can't gather people like that in a place. And anyway, let's what just move on. Yes, fails. I want to remind you about garbage in, garbage, garbage out. out. Technologies are, is as efficient as the person. As the person who put them and uses them. Oh, thank you, Bio. Okay, like, as we were, as we said, we're going out of 2020 on a cherry note. Yes. But still, the editorial from the Blueprint newspaper says the worrisome inflation rates. Yes, we, we started by talking about uh, the economic status of the nation, yeah. uh, the de level at which the pandemic has delved, undermined our economy, yes. in spite of the bold initiatives and programs to try and rev up, rev up the economy and improve the standard of living of the ordinary man. What the editorial is saying is that there is worrisome inflation. As at uh, now, as at July, inflation has increased by 12.82 percent, and. All the initiative that has been made in 2018, our inflation was about 13.34 percent. Mm. It was brought down to about 11 percent, and we were hoping to go to single digit, maybe nine and lower, yeah. when COVID-19 came and everything went tumbling down. But what the editorial is saying that if we are to improve the standard of living of people, and if government initiative about SIP, especially the stimulus. Uh, programs by government mm. and the initiative of government to get 100 million people out of poverty, poverty in 10 years mm. is to achieve the first enemy to tackle is inflation mm. that is the crux of the of the matter because mm. inflation eradicates the purchasing power mm. of the ordinary citizens oh, no, no. and so the is saying that government must put measures in place 
to tackle inflation. We, we you know, on, uh, part of our review today is on the economy, you know, the performance of the uh, some of the indices and instruments that government have used have put in place to really address some of these issues. And inflation will be one of them. And we do have very um, distinguished, I mean, guests who have distinguished themselves in terms of um, development uh, issues and analysis and projections and all that. So it would be nice to hear what they, the, what they will, you know, project or prefer you know, uh, to the issue of uh, inflation, rising inflation rates by the economy. So, uh, let me ask you, uh, I know we're using the Gregorian calendar, what will you be doing, you know, will you also be crossing over? <laughs> well, uh, crossing over is a natural thing because if you look at the Gregorian calendar, then we'll be crossing over in about <laughs> 15 hours time. Yes. But there are several, you may not be surprised, there are over 17 different calendars around the world. Yes. What will you be doing? That's what I'm asking. What will you be it's doing? Going to, because I'll be, going to be crossing over in my home. In your home? Yes. yes. Ah, that is I'm what I'm saying. we have a better 2020. <laughs> Bio, thank you so much yes. for coming thank today. You for it's been me. a pleasure. I'll see you in 2021. 21. Okay. Well, we'll be back after this break. The Council of Our Fathers. I will urge and advise our younger generation to use talent and brain to sort out problems, not uh, arms. Nigerian youth, let's build our nation together. As the countdown to the new year begins, we here at MTA cannot help but look back on a challenging year that has been filled with many lessons. The most important of all being a renewed gratitude for the continuous support of our sponsors, our clients, government at all levels, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, businesses and manufacturers, and you, the viewers. As we cross the finish line together, the celebration of new beginnings would simply be incomplete without you there. And we look forward to sharing the coming year with you. Here's to an excellent year ahead. Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Muhammad Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youth and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely, with a degree of patience and time, they can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria, pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. Kende suffers from indigestion. His twin Taiyi suffers from heartburn. Sometimes it's the other way around or both. That's why they use Gaviscon Double Action. It soothes within three minutes and lasts for up to four hours. For double relief from heartburn and indigestion, Gaviscon Double Action. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news, don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA.
Do you know that 35% of every girl, child, and women are raped on a daily basis? Some are killed in the process. Some take their lives in shame. Others remain emotionally dead for life. It is sad. This culture is not art. Definitely not African. How did we allow bad culture to infiltrate and take over? Even if you lack fear for the law, what of fear of God? And you, why do you cover up rape acts when it happens? Remember, a problem share is a problem have solved. Never cover any rape act because a rapist is a murderer. It could be you or your loved ones next. Women must be treated like the prize gen they are. Say no to rape. in the 2020 in a slump, but will their fortunes change when they take on Leeds United in their first game of 2021 on Saturday? It's Tottenham versus Leeds United on the Premier League Live, showing on the NTA Network from 1pm. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Axis Bank, Babai Jebu, Lipton and Close Up in association with Goal.com. <laughs> Yeah, welcome back and this is good morning nigeria now the year 2020 is one characterized with economic indicators that was negatively affected by the coronavirus pandemic in this background report muspa ud and wahab takes a look at nigeria's economy journey in the year under review as it progresses at a steady recovery pace Nigeria recently got an encouraging global remark as the International Monetary Fund, IMF, said the country maintained its lead as the biggest economy in Africa and 26th largest in the world with an average gross domestic product, GDP, of more than $442.9 billion. The multilateral institution also swiftly passed a gloomy verdict on the country for 2020, declaring that the nation economic outlook was challenging with wide range of issues. Nigeria started 2020 with a motive of improving our economy through reforms to address issues not limited to low oil prices and stumpy crude oil production, capital outflows, lean external reserves and near mono economy. But then, an unexpected visitor in coronavirus through spanners in the works for the country's economy trajectory. And then, months of an inevitable lockdown emptied its impact on the economy like the rest of the world. In the midst of economic rejuvenation, the federal government's belief and encouragement for people to go back to the land started to pay off. And with increased momentum, the once upon a time mainstay of Nigeria's economy, agricultural sector, on a steady growth, was on its way to regain lost glories. From full sufficiency motive, the sector is again becoming a major contributor to the national economy. In the first three quarters of 2020, the agricultural sector contributed an average of 29.77% to Nigeria's economy. However, the slight change in seasonal rain pattern and banditry in parts of the country halting the tilling of the land have raised recent fears of what becomes the output of the sector in 2021. The ships were practically down and efforts were geared towards salvaging the situation with various responsive reforms to face the economic crisis. Notably, the Federal Executive Council on a rescue mission in the middle of the global pandemic launched the Economic Sustainability Plan. Other efforts include the new fuel pricing regime and the partial reopening of the land borders. Also, in the middle of it is the effort by Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, to minimize inflation projected to remain in double digits above the CBN's target range. 
In addition, the budgetary reforms, including Finance Bill 2020, the government is looking ahead with hope for an improved economy with a 13.5 trillion naira 2021 appropriation bill tagged Budget of Economic Recovery and Resilience. That is awaiting presidential assets. So, with the ups and downs characteristics of Nigeria's economy in the unforgettable year 2020, what are those policies that defined the economy and what are the expectations for 2021? This and more are up for discussion on Group Morning Nigeria today. All right, that's uh, a golden voice. Is it golden? Most that will have. Most that will have. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the background, uh, Most Uh Let me quickly introduce our guests. They are all here seated and, of course, uh, uh, in our Bini studio. Professor Ken Ife is a familiar face. Uh, he's an economic uh, policy analyst. He's here with us on Good Morning Nigeria. Prof. I hope Thanks you had a white me. Christmas compliment uh, of the I think season. I did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> but, they, but there wasn't snow. So <laughs> how could you have had a white Christmas? <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Let me also welcome here in the studio Yushao Aliu, who also is an economic analyst. Always a pleasure to have you with Thank us. Thank you. Compliment of the season. Same to you. Thank, Thank you. you. And from our Benin studio, we have Professor Mike Obadon, Professor of Economics and Chairman, Goldmark Education Academy, Benin City, and also a non-executive director of CBN. Good morning, sir, and compliments of the season. Compliments of the season to you, too. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Nigeria. It's my pleasure to be with you. Okay, so let's... Um, let's begin by doing some evaluation and um, we want to look at begin with the macroeconomic le at the macroeconomic level uh, prof and usual the economic growth was initially projected you know at 2.1 there about 2.1 percent just, just before covid 19 and you know by nbs statistics covid 19 came and of course there was contraction by you know above three point uh, about three point five percent percent okay so in terms of performance how would you evaluate the oil sector and non oil sector again against the background of expected uh, government projections well I think uh, I like to look at this um, in the context of what has been good for Nigeria in 2020 what has been bad or not so good, and then what are the much more challenging things, you know, that you could say are ugly or much more challenging. But in the context, and then within this, break it down to my macro, which is where you've landed, mm -hmm. and then look at MESO, because at MESO level, you are looking at sectors, yes. impacts on sectors, mm -hmm. and then micro, micro level, level, you are looking at firms, you know, micro businesses. So in that way, our discussions can, yes. can flow very well. Well, landing us on the macro side, macro looks a lot more on policy mm -hmm. and then looks at monetary policy, what has happened there, fiscal policy, what has happened there, then uh, trade policy, investment policy. And in all of these areas, we have had so much challenges. Uh, uh, if you begin with challenges as, as you've started, then uh, we would say that it could have been worse. What hit us? by way of COVID would have been worse if we didn't have a robust macroeconomic response, response. That is from fiscal and monetary, monetary policy standpoint. Mm -hmm. And much more importantly, the way the two policies have shaken hands, which is both fiscal and monetary, they, they work together more than ever before. Okay. And in that way, they will have more multiple impact on, 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 the, on the economy and on the people. So on, on that respect, in that respect, and the, the figures are there, you know, the economy, and backed by a plan, economic sustainability plan, then CBN always has its own plans, a, a, a range of plans, all of which are to push more lending or more resources to the private sector. And they were following a lot of, a lot of measures. So this didn't come to them as a surprise. And they actually did what is very, very critical to protect the financial sector the banking sector, the capital market, so they, they protected them. And that's why you had those areas flourishing. You know, even in the light of the COVID, you see the financial sector doing well, you see the banking sector. None of them went into heavy loss. 
and then you see the capital market voted at the best in, in the world. So all of those are not by accident, they are by design. It is the way they intervened to protect them, granting them statutory uh. forbearance, then pouring money in the right, in the right area, building capital. So they did that to make sure that we our situation doesn't get worse. Then of course, they also embrace ICT. Uh. Our financial sector embraced ICT early and ICT even became the, the fastest growing sector and has now overtaken trade, overtaken many other sectors. So, it's, it's, so all of them are part of the good news in the area of the, of the macroeconomy. Uh, and on the trade, one thing is, you know, you've got the AFCTA coming in, in tomorrow, effectively. So that's, that's going to be a big challenge for trade. And on investment, which is another aspect of the macroeconomic policy, we have severe challenges because in 2018 we had 15 billion uh, investment mm -hmm. in capital importation then 25 billion in 2019 capital importation in the first quarter of this year 5.8 billion and suddenly with covid it dropped to 1.4 billion 1.5 billion in those quarters so covid actually hit that and we'll be lucky if we end up tomorrow with uh, 10 billion in all together in capital importation. So these are the broad area of yeah. macroeconomic yeah. policy yeah. that have been um, that have been impacted. But the government is trying. Yes, Professor Ken, you know what when you watch other countries on you know international news you, you seem to say thank God in Nigeria at least at least in Nigeria it's sort of a little bit stabilized. You know, the recession didn't hit really, really hard. And one thing I've always wondered is, you know, when you go to, you know, the subnationals and, you know, the local, they don't even know what's going on at all. So thanks for the review. Let me now join Professor Mike Abadel in Benin. You know, a robust microeconomic response by the government has sort of, you know, you know, cushioned the effect of the recession on Nigeria. Let's have a review from you on the 2020 economy in Nigeria. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Jumai. Um, well, the Nigerian economy in 2020, in terms of performance, uh, must be understood uh, against the backdrop of the context of the global economy, uh, which became highly troubled uh, from early in the year because of the Im negative impact of the coronavirus you know, pandemic. And the major driver of the Nigerian economy for quite some time has been externally propelled. Uh, the oil market and once the coronavirus pandemic broke out and uh, nations began to respond with economic lockdowns the demand for crude oil also more or less collapsed and the prices of crude oil collapsed and that's the channel through which the nigerian economy was hit uh, our, the country's oil sales pl plummeted, production reduced, and revenue in terms of Naira and foreign exchange also reduced drastically. You remember at some point there, there were many you know, vessels on the high seas loaded with crude oil, but no buyers. And if we understand that context, that the problem that hit the Nigerian economy in 2020 was not you know, mostly induced internally, but induced externally. In other words, very negative impact of external shocks. Then one can say that the performance of the Nigerian economy in 2020, you know, is not that bad. Uh, yes, it could have been better if there was no external shocks and uh, if there were also no you know, domestic challenges like you know, uh, security in food producing areas 
or banditry activities in many sectors of the economy. And so, like you, it's been rightly observed, in terms of the macroeconomic performance, the gross domestic product uh, was already on the path of improved growth starting from 2019. You observe that throughout 2019, the gross domestic growth product growth rate quarter on quarter showed increase throughout 2019, culminating in 2.55% in the fourth quarter. And so the expectations for 2020, you know, were that uh, the growth rate would further improve be more than what we achieved in 2019. But then, the, like the background reporter indicated, the unwanted visitor suddenly came you know, early this year and disrupted all projections. And in spite of that, in the first quarter, the growth rate was 1.87%. And then in the second quarter, when the impact of the lockdown was really felt on economic activities, the growth rate, you know, became negative at about minus 6.1 percent. But immediately, like Professor Ife rightly said, the fiscal and monetary authorities, you know, were proactive in their policy responses. The central bank intervention measures we are already on, and they were activated and increased. The fiscal authority also initiated a number of programs and policies. And so the third quarter showed improved growth performance, even though it was still in the negative uh, you know, territory, uh, at about minus 3.61%. And you then found that uh, many more sectors in the third quarter recorded positive economic growth rates, which signaled that the economy, you know, was on the path of recovery. And I think that's why some of us actually argue that, you know, at the end of it all, we may achieve a kind of V recovery shape, a situation whereby the growth rate went down sharply, and then suddenly started moving up. And then we can exit recession, perhaps not long from now. So invariably, from my assessment, I would say the economy you know, did fairly well in 2020. It could have been better if the headwinds that uh, buffeted the Nigerian economy in 2020 were not there. Uh, headwinds reflected in COVID-19 and its impact, uh, low oil prices, then the recession in other parts of the world, which negatively impacted on the Nigerian economy in terms of demand for our exports and our earnings and so on. And of course, the increased uncertainty around the world. If those headwinds were not there, Definitely, the gross domestic product growth rate would have been much better you know, than achieved. Well, in the area of inflation, uh, the economy has not done well you know, in that area. And the reasons are very clear. Uh, even though, you know, uh, in response to the COVID-19 exigencies, uh, money was pumped into the system, you know, to reflate the economy, revitalize the economy. The major source of inflation in Nigeria today is not monetary inflation. It's largely, uh, it largely ar ar arises from a number of factors that don't have monetary bearing. And there are structural factors, a major one of which being insecurity, you know, particularly in the food producing areas of the country, 
which has resulted in a situation whereby farmers, you know, are scared out of their farms or they have been chased out of their farms and production is not going on in those areas or where it's going on, output is very limited. And so there is food shortage and that has given rise to the phenomenon of food inflation, which is the major driver of inflation in Nigeria today. So invariably, something will have to be done you know, uh, to ensure that farmers are able to return to their farms. And of course, the phenomenon of poor infrastructure, which has also been a driver, will need to be addressed. So definitely, all right, uh, Prof. There, I, I was actually beckoning on you to, uh, you know, give us a moment because you have raised a number of issues and have also touched on almost all aspects of, uh, you know, of of the, of the economy. Uh, but again, as as long as the uh, international system uh, offers, you know, a marketplace for all economies and encourage uh, interdependency of, you know, economies, there will always be. Once there is any, you know, the, the dynamics of the system will always trigger knock-on effects in the, the economies of many, many nations. So uh, we are not insulated, you know, from external shocks. Uh, Madam Liu, that means that our economic managers will have to be, you know, proactive. We'll have to keep thinking ahead, you know, of of, uh, of events. And Professor Kenife had already indicated earlier on that, but for the fiscal and monetary policies, you know, which have had a handshake, our economy will probably be the worst for it. He has gone to tell us, of course, uh, you know, what has happened, how that has been simpler. But can you just be a bit more specific and give us those fiscal and monetary designs, you know, that have helped to, you know, keep us afloat, keep our economy afloat? Uh, when to understand the context, you have to look back. If you want to assess 2020 and the performance of the economy, looking at the two windows, especially the monetary windows and the fiscal windows, you have to uh, uh, go back a little to understand the first recovery that was recorded in 2017 and the effort made by monetary authorities to at least put uh, different policies to make the economy moving and that's exactly what the central bank has done uh, uh, in the last two years but in 2020 uh, it is uh, clear that the foreign exchange uh, has played a greater role in, 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 in maintaining even what has been recorded presently that is looking at the right importations to the economy and the right foreign exchange to be used to make those importations. It's a good stand and that is why today the exemptions that were made by the central bank of certain goods that are to be encouraged. So the two windows now the Forex has helped the Central Monetary Authority to keep intact our low income as a result of our low demands of our goods at the international market. Fiscal measures, government has... At, at, at what rate is that? Uh, uh, at 379. So looking at 379, uh, that is minus the, or the, 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 what I call the parallel market. Mm -hmm. So you find a situation where if the foreign exchange is maintained and certain restrictions were made based on our, our importation, then domestic capacity is being uh, 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 adjusted. That production capacity has helped many SMEs today. And the central bank does not only stop at that. The central bank has made an effort to include uh, uh, using a lot of stimulus based on economic sustainability plan of the government. And again, the, the tax authorities, the, for the first time, we have seen a situation where there is a lot of improvement in our tax system, despite the fact that there was no protection as a result of COVID-19 within the same period. So assuming that there was no lockdown and the economy was moving, then definitely the I, the, 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 the situation of going back to recession will not even arise.
So, but I'm thinking the central authority using different models, especially the monetary policy aspect, have helped uh, to, to, to balance certain uh, inactions in the market. But, but if you look at impacts on the at the, at the micro level, yeah. you know, th th this is the level that got heavily impacted, mm. you know, not just by the drop in the oil price, you know, indirectly, but yeah. also by, you know, the lockdowns and the measures, you know, to contain COVID-19. Mm. Would you say this positive trend also reflected or, you know, affected, you know, those at the micro level? Yeah, it, it has affected. You know, when, uh, uh, as Professor rightly pointed out, most of this macroeconomic aggregate, sometimes you measure the sector. He cited ICT, for instance. At micro level, there are serious interventions. And that intervention has helped the economy to move by keeping jobs. Not only keeping jobs, by making all the, 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 the value chain of the ICT. It has also helped the economy to be moving. And at the same time also, if you check, for instance, the intervention made by uh, 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 the economic stimulus package using different uh, uh, policies and programs uh, that is attached to the economy. Okay, sure. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I will now come back to Professor Ken. You know, you said all projections for 2020, it was like it was on a springboard, just waiting to take that leap. Suddenly, another recession, two in four years. How do we get out of it? Well, <clears throat> it was inevitable uh, from, from Professor Baden's uh, says. It was a, we are just part of a global system. We have become assimilated into the global economy. For example, our capital market, whatever happens in Hong Kong is reflected instantly in our capital market. And, um, and, and also the banking sector is affected. So there is that uh, integration. And now that our ICT is coming to the center state, that also is open to in, you know, those kind of global influences. The thing is, uh, yes, we are steaming ahead with a plan orchestrated in 2017 by EIGP, but many actors were playing their part, particularly CBN, playing their part, and we were all heading out to a positive uh, when it came. Yes. But having said that, the, the country didn't rest. The, the, the monetary and fiscal authorities didn't rest. They actually carried on. I can tell you this. First of all, we saw a return to our this January to December budget okay. round. And then we are having a second return for the second year. Mm -hmm. Then we also had 2019 Finance Act accompanying the 2020 budget. And, and 2020 Finance Act accompanying 20, uh, 2021 budget. Mm -hmm. Then we also saw a more vigorous implementation of the TSA. And then we also see the Fiscal Responsibility Act is also being rigorously implemented. I haven't seen anything like this. Where the two arms of government, the, Fed, the, the, Fed, the, Fed, the Federal uh, and National Assembly, Assembly, all implemented the three-stage fiscal responsibility act, which says consult effectively all stakeholders at the level of strategy. That is when you have a fiscal, uh, fiscal strategy paper and a, and a, a medium-term uh, medium yes, framework. Yes, 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 yes. And the second time, when you are assimilating budget, mm. sending budget, budget side, and then during the, uh, during the budget debate in the assembly, which is appropriation, all these three stages, there was full consultation on both sides. Now, that's, these, are, these are physical, uh, progress. We are making a lot of progress in, in this area. The synergy was so, awesome then. Yeah, and then we also have national development plan, medium term, 21 to 2000, and I happen to be chairing digital economy, science and technology and bioeconomy. So I can tell you because I'm doing that now, and we are, we are positioning, we are changing the whole dynamics around our national planning. So we are moving, moving away to the side and moving to technology, defining a new economy. So we're looking at a multi-dimensional economy. So, yeah, with all of, and Agenda 2050. So all of those are happening, regardless of what COVID is doing to our economy. So there are traction in many areas. The electricity will now reduce, will increase the price. Then the subsidy in fuel removed. Now that is, do you know, let me give an example. If you spend 3 trillion naira subsidizing fuel, now that is about 7.5 billion dollars. Now you have 75 
licenses to modular refineries. If you give, the, that means that money will give 100, 100 million dollar to each of the refineries. Now, 100 million dollar is the highest amount you need to do 20,000 barrels a day. If you do that, you create 150,000 uh, barrels, uh, one, one, yeah, 1,500 thousand barrels, what the 1.5 billion barrels a day. Now, we only allowed four, four, five thousand by ECO, by uh, OPEC. OPEC. So we can actually pro produce three times more than what we are allowed to fulfill and then export over 1,000 barrels a day. So, and so what is this is what you have done by saving all that hemorrhage on our, on our foreign reserves. Uh, importing the fuel and empowering our private sector to come in and produce not only to meet our demand but to also export to our neighbors under this AFCTA. So, you know, the, this, the, these things have carried on and there are other changes at the level of the oil industry with the with the, the PIB and, and all of that. Yeah, okay. Creating more efficiency in the corporate entities involved in, in, in all of that. So don't ignore this. These things are moving despite what COVID is doing. And they, they will create a critical mass that will ensure that we will have an early recovery. And then we have continuity in governance. Yeah. And I think we need, to, we need to reckon with that. Okay. okay. Prof, I'll, I'll still remain with you. Uh, and I'd like for us to be a little more uh, specific and within context um, with regards to what government has done, uh, you know, of course, to keep the economy afloat. You've touched on a number of the uh, fiscal measures, you know, that have been taken. You know, when COVID-19 came, it plunged millions of people into poverty. People, a lot of people lost their jobs. People are still losing their jobs. Just yesterday, one of the dailies reported over 300 staff of UNTO uh, textile company in Kaduna, you know, laid off. So that starts another, you know, a huge number of people that will be without jobs. Now we're also looking at the population growth, <laughs> which will also add to the number of hungry people. And then you discover that the COVID-19 also took away or disrupted the school feeding program for, you know, uh, being implemented by, by the federal government to encourage enrollment, school enrollment. Now, the number of school children deprived of that, that will now go into the, into the poverty, you know, cycle. Mm -hmm. It's also an addition. So we're looking at huge poverty, you know, rate as a result of, you know, what has happened, COVID-19, and all the triggers, you know, and, and all that. So, can you just give us the measures, okay. the specific measures yeah. that government, you know, uh, used to stimulate the economy back okay. on track? There are three areas yes. of government intervention, quantitative government intervention. One was on the monetary side, two was on the fiscal side, and then three was on humanitarian, that is the use of palliatives and all of that. So let's do with monetary. CBN jumped in early. Just as it was hearing about it, it jumped in early and then provide 50 billion naira through the Nitro Nitro Microfinance Bank. And the target was to hit that household, the MSMEs, those that are most vulnerable. And the reason why it was necessary to do that is because you can do everything you want to do on output. If you don't deal with consumption, the power to consume, then it, it would have failed because 85% of our GDP in terms of consumption is household consumption. Government is about 5.7%. So it was necessary that you reach there because people are going to be thrown out of jobs. Yeah. But you must reach them so that the purchasing power yeah. will continue to, to, otherwise you have a collapse in aggregate demand. And that means you are finished, you know, literally. Now, they also were responsive to the demand. The demand was intense, and then they increased it from 50 to 100 billion, from 100 billion to 150 billion. So that showed progress. Then they also put over a trillion to the manufacturing sector. Then we had serious issue with pharmaceutical. A hundred billion dollar naira went there. So, and that was how the total package on the table was about 3.5 billion, uh, trillion uh, naira on that. But there was something significant. Because I attended the meeting of the convening of the private sector to CBN around the end of March. And this private sector rose in that meeting with two things. One, they were going to contribute money, and they saw that just nearly 30 billion 
uh, were collected and they, they focused that money to isolation centers in some states, which was good. But the second one is more impactful, that they agreed to build a new company called Infra Company, Infrastructure Company Limited PLC, which will be capitalized with 15 trillion naira, naira, not dollar. And then government was going to bring $3 billion uh, sovereign guarantee. Now, that is a game changer. When it, when it does start, it will be a game changer. Because what it will do is to take away that burden of infrastructure that has been binding the government and making us borrow a lot more money externally. Take it away and then rework and then carry on, obviously through PPP and all that. And all those about 26 projects, you know, all these uh, uh, Onitsha Bridge and all these in Lagos, all those huge, huge infrastructure projects to move it away. So that government can focus on education, health, agriculture, you know, work with some national governments. So that's very, very important. And, and as I said, it's a work in progress. I think it's been approved by the F Federal Executive Council. So that is on that side. Then you have the, the fiscal authorities coming in with a plan. Remember, in 2017, we had to get a plan before anybody could talk to Nigeria. Mm. So they got a plan, economic sustainability plan, providing about 2.3 trillion. And within that plan, there were allocations. And then you saw the one going to youth employment, about 774,000, and all that. You know, it was all fairly distributed. So that was also saying, let's, let's meet the monetary policy somewhere. Then you have the humanitarian, which you saw that palliatives were, in fact, you saw the extent of the palliative when there was the NSARS. We started seeing them spring out of the warehouses. So there was, there was that, about 75,000 metric tons went out. So all of that is to reach the poor, to make sure that the stress in the economy is reduced. So all of these three measures were complementary to, 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 to each other. And then we are hitting, um, you know, we, we need more you can never say that it was enough because we have 202 million people. So right. we do need more. But the effort was there. Right. Thank you so much. Right. <laughs> Professor Ken, let's now go to Benin where uh, Professor Mike Abada is waiting. You've heard what Professor Ken has said, you know, different interventions of government. From your view, how did it positively impact on the common Nigerian on the streets? Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Jumai. Uh, well, the impact, you know, of the various uh, policy measures, you know, will be felt uh, if the measures were vigorously implemented. And like uh, Professor Ife has right, rightly said, uh, both the monetary and fiscal authorities implemented, you know, a gamut of measures. Uh, those of the central bank are very clear and straightforward and targeted. Uh, let me add that the initial 50 billion Naira targeted fund for households and the uh, MSMEs, you know, had long, you know, increased to 150 billion, you know, Naira. And as at uh, November, uh, about 143 billion of that fund had been disbursed to affected uh, households and uh, small and medium enterprises. Uh, to enable them improve consumption, particularly the households, and also get some small businesses. And then the small medium enterprises uh, use the money so obtained to either reactivate their businesses or expand their businesses or bring some businesses back to life. So there is very, very significant impact. That meant that uh, employment you know, was also reinvigorated. Those that had uh, laid off workers you know, brought them back. But we are, I don't, what is not certain is whether all workers that were laid off before have been brought back. But we know that 
those businesses that have benefited, you know, from the intervention fund have come back to life and they are producing or doing the businesses for which, you know, the funds were provided. There is also the, you know, 100 billion, you know, Naira healthcare support fund, you know, targeted at pharmaceutical companies and hospitals to enable them provide facilities or set up facilities with a view to addressing the exigencies of COVID-19. I think a significant proportion of that fund has also been disbursed. And of course, the central bank had been quite active too, you know, in financing the 2.3 trillion Naira economic sustainability plan. And, you know, by supporting the real sectors of the economy, particularly manufacturing, with about one trillion, one point something trillion. And so, those companies, businesses that have accessed all these funds are benefiting. And they are, you know, boosting their businesses and boosting capacity and also, you know, supporting livelihoods through employment. And on the part of government, the, the fiscal authority, uh, let us remember that the major instrument uh, which the government uses, you know, to implement its fiscal policy measures is the annual budget. Uh, unfortunately, the size of the budget, you know, had had to be adjusted downwards in 2020 because of the revenue constraint uh, posed by COVID-19, you know, problem. Uh, but the, if we look at the implementation of the 2020 budget, the revised budget, you found that uh, efforts have been made by the federal government to implement, you know, or even over implement the personnel budget, the overhead budget, they have been implemented to the tune of more than 100%. Uh, their servicing has also been high, over 90%. And the capital budget had been implemented as of September up to the tune of about 60%. And I know it's much more by now. And so spending by government you know, is a way to take the economy out of recession, boost the purchasing power of uh, citizens, uh, either through those that government employs and are being paid and regularly, at least at the federal level, or through direct spending on goods and services by the federal government. So the measures have been impactful, you know, on livelihoods and also the economy, you know, on its own. And most of these measures that uh, the, f the fiscal authority have been implementing are contained in the economic sustainability plan. You know, in various sectors, if you recall, there are provisions for sectors right from agriculture through housing, uh, manufacturing, then even security. Uh, programs aimed at creating jobs for youth. I think that's a major goal of the Economic Sustainability Plan. And most of the programs and projects are aimed at providing opportunities for youth to be employed directly or indirectly. And I think these are being implemented. And to the extent that implementation is going on, of course, subject to availability of resources or the constraint posed by financial resources, then definitely there is significant impact, you know, on Nigerians, you know, those who have, you know, benefiting in one way or the other from the various programs, either implemented by the Monetary Authority, Central Bank, or by the federal government itself. So. Uh, Professor Badan, thank you. We'll, we'll get back to you. Um, th there is no doubt that um, 
uh, all world economies uh, have had to you know, review their development plans, their budgets uh, in view of uh, uh, COVID-19 and other dynamics uh, in the international market. Uh, but there's also no doubt about the robustness of the raft of measures, both fiscal, monetary, and humanitarian that they, you know, they, this administration uh, you know, put in place to address the issues. But in terms of, uh, uh, Madam Liu, in terms of inclusiveness, in terms of the quality of what has, you know, been, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, the measures in terms of the effectiveness, usage, and, and and all that. How would you evaluate that within against the background of addressing employment, against the background of addressing poverty, and against the background of looking at inflation? Do you think they've been effective? It, it has not been effective, to, to be frank with you, uh, looking at the fact that in 2019 fiscal presentation to the National Assembly, uh, President Buhali rightly pointed out that he intend to see what is called collective prosperity. By collective prosperity, it means that prosperity by the ruling class, prosperity by the National Assembly members, and uh, prosperity by the street, or, uh, by the man on the street. So, but... One determining factor, as you rightly pointed out, that gives this prosperity is the stability in the general price level. If there is instability in price level, that is, for instance, when you talk of inflation, the inflation can destroy somebody's consumer confidence in the market. And that is what is affecting the prosperity of most of the household. Uh, let me give you an instance uh, from the production side. Uh, when you take the macroeconomic aggregate and you take, for instance, the contribution of agriculture, right from the inputs, right from the production, the, the, the producer is shortchanged. It's shortchanged by high price of inputs. So when you have high price of input and then after harvesting, you are taking it to the market, it's already going to be on high price. And one fundamental issue uh, that is necessary to look into, poverty level. When government pronounce taking 100 millions out of poverty in 10 years, it's indirectly insinuating that there is 100 millions out of 202 million people that are below poverty line. So the implication now is how do you allocate the resources? Allocation of resources is what would take an individual out of poverty. And Professor rightly pointed how consumer confidence is eroded. When the, the once there is no price stability, you have limited income, you go to the market, and when you go to the market, what what do you used to have to satisfy a household? Because of change in price, in limited time, you go back to the same market, you cannot have it. So there is going to be that pressure on your own confidence. But if you talk about price stability, yeah, uh, there have been a number of uh, measures. Mm -hmm. You take a, you take the intervention in the agri sector, for instance, to ensure that farmers. You know, you remember the president always emphasized the fact that you know we need to eat what we produce. So there have been a lot of interventions. You know, to assist farmers. You know, rice farmers, and we know what you know has happened. There were also, you know, steps taken by the federal government. The reopening of the border, for instance, which is a step you know to encourage. Uh, uh, investor Tra yeah, yeah. And, and all trading. that. Yes, yeah. tr trading. Mm. So what would you say is directly responsible for the steady uh, for the rise, you know, in inflation for the, for for this two-digit inflation rise? Uh, there are a lot of factors. One, if you check even the palliatives <coughs> that were acquired or procured by the humanitarian agencies, this same product were taken out of market, but we are not distributed as at when it is needed. So that pressure of taking much outside the economy, and that's holding. So you have already inflated the price, and then you leave it without supplies. And this holding by whom? Because you need to plan that. Different, different, different uh, 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 intermediaries. If you tell, for instance, rice producers, as you rightly mentioned, mm. the, the rice producers depend on the rice that is taken to the rice mills to have their income. So many people went without mills, taking the rice from the farmers, and they are not taking it to the mills. Middlemen. Middlemen. So that activity has helped 
to reduce the supply in the market and that reduction in supply of the market triggered the price increase that is one i'm trying to tell you an institutional that is why i gave you an example of as an intervention as palliative during lockdown you take this product out from the market on high prices after triggering the inflation then it was kept somewhere and it is not bad the same consumer has to go to the market again and put pressure on what is not available that would trigger price increase too that is another factor then and the, the most important factor is that border that we have been trading with taking our goods out taking other goods in is blocked and that stops certain supply of necessary materials for instance at the border communities we have over 105 border communities which depend on trading for over 100 years among among border communities but it was necessary it was a necessary step yes it? it was a necessary it's step to, to, yes to protect the, to, you see yeah. it's, it's protect by protectionism if you are protecting local industry you close your borders but you regulate the 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 the, the, the activities in the border mm -hmm. and that's exactly what the government is trying to do now despite the fact that full land borders are open but there are certain exemptions and that exemption is to protect local industries that are producing so as to continue to produce but when we are talking on inflation and we are trying to know why why prices trigger we have to understand all the factors that brought about changes in prices in a very short period of time. Isha Ali, thank you. So we've thank raised you. some pertinent questions which we'll address after this break. We'll be right back. as you can see, I'm a technician and I'm doing it to help myself and to help my generation. I'm a business. 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 i some of them, they even die in the process. Emotional trauma, Uncle, if they make some of them be like, say, they're not dead this world again, they don't go, but they still, they live, they live like ghosts. Some of them, shame, don't cook, make them go, kill yourself. It's not good, though. This not be our culture. It not fit be the African way. What we call allow this kind of yeah, yeah, joy body with us, they in loud way, way. If you know they fear Lord, way, man, put, you know they fear Baba God, eh? Yourself, you know when they cover mouth, so you see many, many, one on they happen. You know what I hear when the Oyibo talk say, problem when they bring come out. Then they so much sharply. Remember, person will feel rape. If it's a key person, you know, if it be you, if it be your picking, if it be person them where you love well and well. So make we learn the carry women then, like diamond where we be. No grief or rape. Oh. of TV Guide is out with special focus on the game changer, His Excellency Governor Abdullahi Sule of Nasarawa State. Broadcasting in a digital economy, Maxwell Local gives an insight. This edition also features Nancy Naji of AIT, a name synonymous with business. Meet the NCDC boss, Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazu. TV Guide, your indispensable companion, also explains the relevance of social media media in the modern society. Meet some TV professionals who have impacted their spaces and other inspiring stories in sports, entertainment and lots more. Grab a copy at the vendor near you or NTA stations nationwide. TV Guide, your indispensable companion. Unity. These are vital components of nation building. For all to be well, we appeal. 
that we should refrain from volatile, provocative, inciting messages and language. Let's build and not destroy. and the 2020 in a slump, but will their fortunes change when they take on Leeds United in their first game of 2021 on Saturday? It's Tottenham versus Leeds United on the Premier League Live, showing on the NTA Network from 1pm. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Axis Bank, Babai Jebu, Lipton and Close Up in association with Goal.com. <laughs> You're welcome back and if you're just joining us, this is Good Morning Nigeria and we're talking about how the Nigerian economy fared in 2020. Professor Ken, let me come back to you. You talked about all these interventions. You know, post, we're going to 2021 and some say the interventions have worked, some say it well, it didn't really work. How sustainable will it be in 2021, all these interventions that government has carried out? You know, first, you know when I say the ugly, the ugly part was what Claire actually mentioned, how inclusive yeah. is the growth? Yeah. The GDP is higher, how inclusive? How does it affect the man on the street? How does the, how does the figure put food on the table? Yeah. And then of course we also know that food is, is on the witness stand when it comes to inflation. And there's so many more stories about it. But, and if you look at all the indices, all the indices are negative. The the Human Resource Development, uh, H, uh, Human De Development Index, the Poverty Index, whether the Smiling Index, and all the, all the indices, all the indices are Logistics Performance Index, Global Enabling Trade Index, all of them are negative. Negative, really keeping us down there. It all tells you that, and unemployment, very, very high. So uh, we need to see how we touch Although we've tried on the ease of doing business, but you still we're still there in the last, in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter of fourth quarter of, of it. So it's, there are major sources of concern. Now, in terms of sustainability, particularly having regard to the next few hours, we'll be going into AFCTA, continental trade, and coming out of the border closure. I mean, it's debatable how the effectiveness of the border closure. I supported it from the point of view that you need to establish the size of the smuggling economy. Mm. And we found out when customs started earning extra five billion naira a day, mm. that shows us that we are talking about trillion being lost in that smuggling trade. Mm. And then when all the theaters of war are, are saying that there's too much drug here, there's more uh, small arms, and there are, if you go to the theaters of war, the commanders there are from Niger, from Mali, from from uh, Chad. Chad. Yeah. Ah, then you have to you have to look at that. Yeah. So border closure enabled us to get a grip on what was going on. So all of those, but never a permanent solution. Border closure is never a permanent solution mm. to any trade-related issue. Mm. So we established that. And then when you are clo opening, you are opening with all the commitments mm. to the protocols of ECOWAS, all the member states are going to do that. But in a, in a, if you are looking at AFCT, which is a new horizon in the next few hours, mm. they are going to say, what lesson have we learned mm -hmm. here that is going to mean something to us going forward? Remember, we are surrounded by Francophone countries. Yeah. And people always forget that five years ago, four years ago, one Naira was buying f uh, three francs a far. Now it's buying 1.45. So effectively, our money is devalued yes. 50%. So everything we sell here is cheap to them. All our agricultural produce is cheap. So they are importing it. If you like, you are, the border closure is stopping their things from coming, but our things are still smuggled out. Mm. So that food that is going out that is cheaper for them is affecting our inflation. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. So we need to know in the new dispensation heading into AFCTA, yeah. are we still going to, have we got a robust arrangement about the movement of trade mm. across the border? Mm. The second point is this. Trading with anybody in Africa, you have to be looking at transport, uh -huh. shipping, line. Yeah. Look at the chaos in our seaports. Uh -huh. 200,000 naira for moving a container out of port to somewhere in Lagos is now 1.8 million naira. 
All right? I even challenge the railway. I'll talk about that, that one later if there is time. Now, you look at railway. Why do you have to talk about railway? You look at aviation. We are already in the aviation with our refurbishment of our international airports. Mm -hmm. But where is your carrier? We haven't got a carrier, national carrier. So there are challenges in that because making nice. Lagos and Abuja an airport hub is very critical in our engagement of AFCTA. And that's why I always ask, All right. with, with regards to uh, the, the same, uh, AFCTA, what has been our deal? What was our deal? Well, the deal, you can have any deal on the table, but you have to have an infrastructure and a plan that shows how you're going to execute a deal. Mm -hmm. If you can have a deal on paper, it comes back to what you are asking me about uh, the inclusiveness of, yes. of your growth. Yes. So but the, the, the one I want to stress is the, the seaports. Now, given the challenge on the seaport, Nigeria is investing on deep sea ports. Lake Deep Seaport, Badagri Deep Seaport, Ebon Deep Seaport, Kalaba, mm -hmm. uh, Bakasi Deep Seaport. Mm -hmm. They've already signed out the Boni Deep Seaport, and then you also have um, uh, Bayelsa yeah. wanting Deep Seaport. Mm -hmm. Now, what does, why is this significant? If you're having all this problem with Apapa, mm -hmm. Apapa and Tinkan, mm -hmm. if you're having all this challenge, mm -hmm. in 2050, Lagos will move from 25 million to 75 million people. Mm -hmm. Where are they going to be? Where are they going to stay? You're going to live inside the water. Okay, two, with all this huge capacity, when a, a, a ship comes to the high sea, Panamax, four boats will go there because they'll be carrying 16,000 containers. They will load four, 4,000 and bring to the port because it's a very shallow port. Yeah. If you are having this problem with ship of 4,000 containers coming in, what's going to happen? When those big Panama coming to Lake, coming to all this area, what it says is that Nigeria is building an infrastructure for a maritime hub. And that becomes significant because it's no longer too challenging evacuate from these hubs into the country that means rail has to come in you've yeah. got to use rail to move them yeah. inland container depot to move not by people driving into lagos that's wonderful well, the second yes. one is how do you move things across africa because yeah. with a huge maritime hub you'll be the cheapest entry of goods from canada america mm -hmm. brazil uh, europe into africa yeah. and then whereas kenya is the cheapest for all the things from Japan, China. So for you to use the Continental Rail Line, yeah. which is from Lamu, is already in um, in Calabar, well, not Calabar, in Cameroon. Yeah. We need to just link it up so that our things will go. That's where you get transport efficiency, and then you become you become a big player in okay. both at the aviation side and on the maritime. Okay, there's, Professor. There's still, a lot, there's still a lot, lot to be done in terms of uh, keying into this uh, single right. single market with Africa. Claire, but thank before you, we go to yes. can we take the tweets? Um, okay, okay. Let, let, let me just ask uh, Prof, Professor Bradon this question before we do, please. Uh, Prof, again, I, I just like your view on um, what Professor Ken Ife has just said with regards to um, moving to 2021. Are the negatives overwhelming and then uh, what must we do? Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Claire. Let me say that, yes, there are challenges, there are negatives, but uh, there is a basis for cautious optimism, considering a number of developments that have uh, taken place in recent times, and which we hope will dovetail into 2021. Uh, for example, uh, if you look at the real sector of the Nigerian economy, you observe that the indices that we call uh, Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index and Non-Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index have been trending upwards. Actually, as of November, the manufacturing index had uh, exceeded 50, which is the benchmark. And the non-manufacturing index has also edged up towards that number. And what does that one suggest? It suggests you know, positive expectations about the gross domestic product you know, growth you know, going forward. And very importantly, uh, and by the grace of God, a vaccine or vaccines have been developed, you know,
to handle the COVID-19. And uh, given that it's relatively safe and effective and available to large proportions of the population, you know, abroad and even in Nigeria that we have access, then that is really what can provide a good handle on the COVID-19 pan pandemic and then avoid, you know, lockdowns. And once lockdowns are avoided in the various global economies, uh, that will have positive effects on the Nigerian economy. And then thirdly, as at now, the oil price is, uh, has shown, you know, upward trend. I think it's uh, in the neighborhood of $50, you know, per barrel, uh, very much above the $40, you know, uh, per barrel benchmark for the 20, you know, 21 budget. That's a very good, you know, signal. Then fourthly, uh, you also have a situation that the credit which uh, Central Bank has uh, piloted all this while to be much more available to the private sector is still going on. And all the indicators shows, you know, good financial sector, you know, soundness uh, in terms of growing assets, growing credit, you know, and so on and so forth. And so CBN interventions invariably, you know, will be sustained, you know, coming, going forward. And then, of course, there will also be fiscal injections, you know, through the a capital budget, you know, and other aspects of the budget of the federal government. And so, even in the capital market, you will see, you know, rising prices of assets. You know, all these are, you know, signs that the economy could perform much better, you know, in 2021 than in, in 2020. So, you know, hope is not lost. And uh, there is every reason for us to be supportive of government policies. And importantly, at our level here in Nigeria, you know, having a good handle on COVID-19 so that there will be no second round economic lockdown. Because if there is a second lockdown, that one will disrupt, you know, whatever gains that have been made so far in the area of economic recovery. And finally, Claire, let me just uh, add a footnote to what uh, our, our other guests in the studio said about inflation, uh, about the trigger of inflation. I fully agree with him about the role of market unions and associations, you know, middlemen in jacking up inflation rate. But, you know, their role is not fundamental. The fundamental factors I had earlier addressed. You know, uh, re in November, information, we had information that even formal organizations that buy, that buy produce, like rice, were buying locally produced rice from farmers very quickly and hoarding them in their warehouses. And that one triggered some scarcity and increases in their prices. So the market unions and associations are very potent in most of the states. They tend to worsen the inflation, you know, make life difficult for ordinary people. So government must look into that area, uh, how we can tame that aspect. Government should not say, oh, we are operating a free market. There is nothing like free market anywhere in Nigeria. The markets are being manipulated. So government must step in, you know, on behalf of the Nigerian people. So, Biden, thank you, thank you, thank you for your clarifications and your contribution. Okay, we've got a number of tweets, uh, as always, a number of them. We'll quickly take them right now, and then we'll get the closing thoughts from our guests in the studio. Hassan Sadiq, 2020 has been a rough year for the global economy, no doubt. With the border closure alongside COVID-19 pandemic breakout, in addition to the end SARS protests and rising case of insecurity. Uh, Ola Dumeji, more of four tweets. Implementing budget at the right time will a long way boost the economy of our great country, Nigeria. We're expecting a prosperous year 2021. 
And with the Masi Haruna Demo, economy is a substructure where every other superstructure, like politics, education, it is a living. Alas, the sector is bedeviled with a lot of incumbrances in 2020 due to the pandemic and, of course, other factors. 2021 all should be scrutinized in order to curtail any obstacle that may arise. And you know, say it restricts 2020 is very hard for Nigerians in terms of economic challenges, high cost of commodities, unemployment, COVID-19, and slowdown of prices of crude oil triggered the scenario. And Festus Akimboewa tweets, Nigeria's economy tipped into recession again in 2020 because of the coronavirus pandemic and crashing oil prices. The exchange rate is going through the roof while consumer spending is crashing despite CBN pumping billions of Naira into the economy. 2020 is a bad year for our economy. And Oladi Meji Morofos still tweets, why do Nigerians believe in foreign currency more than the Naira? Suleiman Baba gonna tweet crush crash in crude oil prices in the international market has make Nigeria's economy which relies solely on oil revenue weaker and calls for all hands to be on deck in diversifying the revenue base by exploring the vast opportunities in the non oil sector to sustain the economy. Mutana Farouk, government should empower MSMEs through Reduction in cost of production, enabling environment is also more effective than giving cash to people to do business. The price of PMS and electricity tariffs should be reduced to bare minimum. Well, I don't know um, how that is possible because subsidy has been removed. So the price of PMS will be determined by the market forces. Mm -hmm. uh, you say, according to you, you say that will encourage the economic growth. I really uh, have my doubts so if uh, <laughs> that will be done. Okay. Bar numbers and tweets. It's true. The current system is favoring only few people in this country because he said, "Please let's review some of these things, especially the salaries of politicians." Can't imagine most of Nigeria's income are going into the pocket of politicians. Okay, and uh, we have uh, Yerima Isa. Government has done well despite the pandemic, uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic. But see, the government should have to re strategize, especially on small scale businesses. Isha Taiwo tweets. After all, Nigerian economy fared well and would have been party time, but for the pandemic and NSAS distractions. Kudos to the economic managers as I remain optimistic that by first quarter 2021, we will bounce back to positive GDP. All right. Thank you all of you for your tweets. And uh, just a closing remark from uh, uh, Isha Aliu, uh, what can be done in 60 seconds? Um, expecting your, the, your predictions for 2021 too. <laughs> Briefly. I'm, I'm expecting the economic uh, managers to be more proactive in uh, uh, aggregating most of the functions of macroeconomic variables in an attempt to uh, push the economy to grow. The GDP that we have recorded so far uh, being the 26th on the list of the world, we are expecting to be better by, by emphasizing on more ease of doing business. All right, Tushal, thank you very much. Let me quickly appreciate all our guests uh, right here, beginning with, uh, of course, uh, Malam Yushal Aliu, an economic analyst. Thank Always a pleasure to have you with us. You. Professor Ken Ife, economic uh, policy analyst, thank also uh, thank good you. to have you with us. And from uh, studio in Ibadan, um, Benin. Benin, I beg your pardon. I don't know why I'm thinking of Ibadan. Uh, Professor Obadan, of course, uh, joined us. Professor Obadan, thank you very much for being with us this morning. Well, sports update, I think Claire is next. Okay, all right. So let's see sports. Rivers United kicked off their campaign in the new Nigeria Professional Football League with a hard 1-0 victory over Rangers with 10 men inside the Adoki Amansi Amaka Stadium in Port Arcot on Wednesday. The Stalin Eguma side were coming from their 2-0 away win against South African representatives Belfont and Celtic in the CAF Confederation Cup. Fortune Omoniwari scored the winner before 30 minutes into the match. Rivers United will be away to Abia Warriors on January 3rd, while Rangers will host Aqua United in their next MPFL match. Meanwhile, Nigerian football governing body, the NFL, have approved the invitation tours of Turkey and Morocco proposed for.
for the country's senior women's national team. The Super Falcons have not played a match since they were eliminated from the Olympic Games qualifiers by Côte d'Ivoire in October 2019 at the Agege Stadium in Lagos. Despite not kicking the ball in 2020, the Super Falcons climbed one spot in the FIFA rankings to end the year on 37th position in the world while also retaining top spot in Africa. NFL President Amadou Pinnick had revealed last week that his leadership were considering the involvement of the African champions in the Turkish Women's Cup. Following an NFL executive meeting, the Nigerian football body approved the participation of the team in next year's tournament and also a pair of friendlies with Morocco. The 2021 Turkish Women's Cup is scheduled to be held from February 15 to 25. <laughs> Well, that's about what we have time for. Good morning, Nigeria. Today, Claire, you know, it's the last for the year 2020. We yes, let's, let's, let's quickly wish our guest here yes. in the studio. I know yes. Professor Biden has gone. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, Professor, it will be out of place to say Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. And we thank our viewers for being, you know, for staying with us all through the year. And there's nothing we can say, but thank you. I am Jumwa So Thank you so much for watching. I'm sure you all know we all appreciate you. you you've uh, been the reason why we're here. And uh, each time you send us your tweets, um, we appreciate your contributions and being with us. So from all of us here, the good morning Nigeria crew, those you can see and those you cannot see, we wish you a prosperous 2021. Happy Bye -bye. New Year.